So we were having this uh, discourse on fundamental limits of uh, energy conversion uh, for uh, solar cells. And uh, in uh, some of the previous videos, I described to you this excellent work done by uh, William Shockley and Hans Koizier. And this uh, paper they published in uh, 1961, where they used the approach of uh, detailed balance. That is, uh, you essentially use a thermodynamic principle that you uh, uh, essentially balance the incoming and outcoming radiation at each frequency and uh, that is also uh, called as the Shockley uh, Quasar uh, limit. So this was uh, published by them uh, you know in 1961 but they made certain assumptions which were uh, uh, which was fine uh, back then when uh, you know this was uh, one of the first works uh, calculating this uh, fundamental efficiency limit but uh, they needs to be corrected in uh, in the current uh, light of things so few of the assumptions that they made uh, which need to be corrected was that they assumed that the sun and the cell uh, were ideal black bodies so they assumed the sun to be at a black body uh, uh, the radiation coming from the sun is equivalent to a black body which is uh, at a temperature of uh, 6000 Kelvin. We know that uh, the actual radiation which uh, comes from the sun, it has uh, certain parts uh, of the spectrum which are absorbed uh, due to the atmosphere. So this uh, needs to be uh, corrected for. They also assume that the absorption is a step function. So all the photons which have energy uh, or frequency greater than the energy of the band gap, they are completely absorbed, while those which are below it are uh, not absorbed at all. And we know that uh, uh, you know all semiconductor materials they have uh, absorption coefficient which depends upon the energy. So it's uh, not fair to assume uh, a step uh, profile exactly. Also, they assumed uh, the loss mechanism they took into account was uh, only one, and uh, that was uh, with the uh, uh, concerning to radiative recombination. We uh, now know that uh, you know there are few more fundamental uh, loss mechanism, and uh, one of them is related to Auger recombination, and the other one is related to uh, free carrier absorption. And these are very fundamental to any semiconductor as well. So these needs to be taken into account account as well while calculating this uh, efficiency limit. So this was done by uh, TJ and uh, Yablonovic in a paper they published in uh, 1984 and it's uh, it's called as the TJ uh, Yablonovic limit uh, in, uh, in honor of uh, uh, their uh, paper. So this is the paper that uh, was uh, published. It was published in Transaction of Electron Devices in uh, 1984. So let me again uh, just read through the read through the abstract. So what they are saying over here that they are extending this uh, detailed uh, balance uh, method, which was uh, first done by Shockley and Quasier in 1961, and uh, they are including this uh, other loss mechanism which I mentioned which is the free carrier absorption and the OJ recombination and I'll just describe what they mean and uh, this is included in addition to the radiative uh, recombination mechanism and uh, based on this they get a limiting efficiency of 29.8% uh, uh, for a AM 1.5 spectrum so instead of the black body radiation uh, uh, assuming the sun to be a black body they're taking this AM 1.5 uh, spectrum and uh, they further say that the silicon surface uh, is uh, textured to uh, benefit from uh, the light trapping effects so let's go into you know what they added into step by step so if i look at uh, their paper so the very first thing that it was instead of assuming the sun to be a black body they assume the sun, uh, the spectrum from the sun to uh, be equivalent to the AM 1.5G spectrum. And if you do that, then the efficiency, just by taking into account only the uh, only the radiative recombination, you see a much higher efficiency coming. Uh, uh, so you get your know, efficiencies of close to 33% if you do that. And uh, this is just by changing the spectrum from uh, the ideal black body spectrum given by Planck to the actual spectrum which is uh, which is observed on earth which is uh, this am 1.5 uh, g spectrum 
द सेकेंड थिंग दैट तीज एन यबलोना विच द पेपर करेक्टेड फॉर वॉज दिस शॉकली एंड कॉलेज दैट अज्यूम द एब्जॉर्बशन टू बी अ स्टेप फंक्शन सो दैट अज्यूम दैट ऑल द वेवलेंस विच आर और ऑल द फ्रीकवेंसीज विच आर ग्रेटर दैन द बैंड गैप दे आर एब्जॉर्ब इमिजिएटली एंड ऑल द फ्रीकवेंसी विच आर लेस दैन इट आर नॉट एब्जॉर्ब एट ऑल इन रियालिटी द एब्जॉर्बशन कोफिशेंट इट लुक्स समथिंग लाइक दिस वेर इंस्टेड ऑफ बींग एग्जैक्टली अ स्टेप फंक्शन यू सी द Uh, uh, you this kind of, see this kind of a profile where this uh, absorption uh, coefficient it depends upon the energy of the incoming photon so they uh, take uh, they took this into account in fact if you have a photons which uh, whose energy is uh, very close to the band gap uh, of silicon then in fact in fact it has a very poor absorption coefficient and many a times uh, it can essentially uh, escape out of uh, your semiconductor without uh, getting absorbed at all so they took into account uh, all of this so they assumed uh, this uh, textured uh, surface and this textured surface is assumed to uh, maximize the light trapping and uh, this is uh, worthy of another video so i'll describe this uh, limit of light trapping uh, in another video but they assume that uh, this uh, front surface it has a reflectivity of 0 uh, and this uh, back surface it has a reflectivity of 1 uh, so all the light which is reaching this uh, black surface is uh, completely reflected off and they assume that the cell has a finite thickness as well which is uh, uh, which is uh, you need to consider if uh, uh, if some of your uh, if some of your uh, spectrum is uh, escaping out so then another thing which is uh, really a fundamental uh, loss mechanism which they took into account Uh, was these uh, two other loss mechanism which is uh, the free carrier absorption and the oge recombination so in the shockley coiser paper the only uh, only loss mechanism that uh, shockley and coiser took into account was the radiative recombination so what they said was if you have these electrons and hole present the only loss mechanism is essentially the recombination of them which emits a photon but there are two ad additional uh, recombina recombination mechanism or you know there are two additional of these uh, loss mechanism which are fundamental to any semiconductor so the let me talk about this uh, oj recombination first so this oj recombination means that uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, these uh, electrons and holes uh, recombining and giving out that uh, extra energy to a photon they can essentially give these extra energy to either uh, electron which is now excited and now it loses this energy in the form of lattice collision which are uh, phonons so there is uh, no a uh, photon emitted in the sub process but it's a three particle process where this excess energy is given to this uh, electron and it uh, loses this in uh, in the form of a heat similarly these electrons uh, and holes they can uh, recombine and they can give this extra energy to a hole and which would subsequently lose it uh, back uh, in the form of these uh, phonons or these uh, lattice vibration so this is a fundamental process so this uh, oj recombination is a fundamental process of any semiconductor and it uh, it's a three particle process so it involves this uh, electron this hole and in this case this electron and similarly over here it involves one electron and uh, two of these holes and this rate of this oj recombination since a uh, three pa uh, three uh, particle process it's uh, proportional to in this case uh, n square p and in this case where this extra energy is uh, given to a hole it's proportional to uh square of the hole concentration multiplied by this electron concentration so this is a fundamental process that uh, needs to be uh, taken into account as well another uh, loss uh, mechanism which is again uh, fundamental is this uh, free carrier absorption so what it means that uh, if you have uh, your uh, if you have incoming photons and usually they excite a electron and hole pair but instead they can also excite these uh, free carriers so let's say you have a n type semiconductor and you have a lot of electrons present over here so instead of these uh, uh instead of these photons exciting a uh, electron and hole pair they can uh, get absorbed by these uh, free carriers so this electron will take away this energy of the photon and it will get excited when subsequently this excited electron would uh, lose out its energy in the form of again uh, phonons so this is also a fundamental uh, 
uh, fundamental uh, loss mechanism which is uh, native to uh, which occurs in any semiconductor material and uh, so they took these uh, two into account and uh, turns out this uh, OJ recombination is uh, is actually uh, much more uh, uh, much bigger loss mechanism as compared to this uh, free carrier adsorption. So this is nicely shown in this uh, in this uh, plot uh, over here from their paper. So they say they say that in an ideal case, your incoming light produces a short circuit current of uh, uh, forty two point two uh, milliampere for the cell, which is a uh, uh, assumed to have this check string and reflectivity of zero at the front surface and reflectivity of one at the back surface. So out of that uh, forty two point two, you see that uh, according to uh, according to their analysis, the radiative uh, recombination it's uh, the loss due to that is uh, around uh, uh, point uh, four milliampere. But the OJ recombination, the loss due to that, it's actually much higher. And the loss uh, due to that is uh, approximately uh, 0.9 uh, milliampere. The free carrier absorption uh, is also present, but the loss due to that is uh, much less. It's uh, 0 0.02 milliampere. And then there are these other loss mechanisms such that, you know, some of it uh, will, uh, light will just uh, uh, not get absorbed and it will escape the cell. So what you get net is uh, a fraction uh, of this uh, incoming light is uh, what you collect uh, as the final uh, uh, extracted uh, current. And this is a uh, uh, fundamental limit for that is 41.1 uh, uh, milliamp for this uh, cell, which has a thickness of 100 micron. And uh, so they derived uh, the fundamental efficiency limit for uh, silicon, uh, which is this uh, TJ Yablonovich limit. They derived it to be around 29.8% for the case of uh, silicon. So this, uh, again, this uh, chart where I'm borrowing from uh, Dick Swanson, it uh, summarizes these loss mechanisms uh, very well. So if you take uh, the actual uh, spectrum of uh, AM 1.5, then the shockley coiser limit becomes 33%. Uh, but now you have to take into account uh, that uh, uh, you have a rather than having a step function for your absorption, you have a finite absorption coefficient. So you lose out uh, some light which escapes out of the cell without getting uh, absorbed. And uh, then you also have this OJ recombination, which turns out to be, you know, uh, which shaves off a few uh, more than a few percentage points out of your efficiency and the uh, the TJ Yablonovich limit for uh, for uh, for this uh, single junction uh, silicon based uh, uh, solar cell is approximately 29 or 29.8 percent to be exact and the best practical uh, uh, the best university cells actually which have been demonstrated so this record belongs to the University of uh, New South Wales and this this record is around 25 uh, percent so the practical limit there are some additional losses over here so there might be uh, you know the uh, reflectance at the front surface and so on so the practical limit that you can achieve uh, with the uh, silicon based uh, uh, single junction cells is around uh, 26 to 27 percent 